let me say a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. So I'm number three, and I'm watching all these babies be born in the house, and all those who have children in your families, which you all do, obviously, you know, babies are awesome. There's such, there's such a gift about a baby. There's something so beautiful about a baby that their, their need to be loved, their total dependency, their total vulnerability, and also their total joy. There's something so, even if they scream and cry half the time, but the, the, their, their, their childlike simplicity in experiencing what I believe is ultimately the love of God, and, and they get to sing with the angels even before you know, we even realize what they're experiencing, but I, bet, I believe the babies are close with the angels and they get to have experiences that we don't often get to have as adults. And we probably don't even remember later on. I mean, that's one theory. But babies, there's something so beautiful about them. I was just at a funeral on Saturday in, um, in Maryland. And there was a little boy named John Paul Kilner who died at 14 months. And actually, one of the girls who works at Live Action, it's her, it's her godson. And little John Paul, you know, he was diagnosed right when he was born. They discovered he had spinal mus muscular atrophy, which means that none of his muscles worked. And the doctor said, you know, he couldn't survive more than a day, but they, they gave him some life support and they loved him and they prayed for him. And little John Paul lived 14 months. And he was named after, of course, Blessed Pope John Paul II. And we were praying for a miracle to Blessed Pope John Paul. But, you know, his, his life, one, one priest that the family was close to said that John Paul had a priestly vocation, he believed, because the priestly vocation is to suffer and to offer sacrifices. And little John Paul was his own sacrifice and the suffering he endured. But it was amazing to see that, you know, and, and, and um, the, the uncle of little John Paul wrote an article recently named Tim. And Tim wrote that, you know, when John Paul, before he lost the muscles in his face, because he just completely, all his muscles, you know, deteriorated. But before little John Paul lost the muscles in his face, when he was just a few months old, he would smile. He'd just beam. And, and Tim said that this would make grown men sob because it was this little baby who was totally dependent and didn't have a chance at life. The doctor said he'd die any minute, and he would just smile as long as he could. And little John Paul, even though he was only 14 months and never spoke a word in his life, couldn't even be held because he was, he was trached and he had to be on a ventilator. So he was, in a, you know, he was kind of in an in a ambulatory little, you know, almost like a carriage. Even though all of that, you know, John Paul touched so many people's life. And he teaches us, and what he you know, taught me again and reminded me again this weekend is that we are valuable and we have dignity completely intrinsically. Not because of what we can give to the world, because of what we can achieve, because of our beauty, because of our physical successes, because of our intellectual successes, not because of even how much we can love, not even because of how virtuous we can be or the actions that we do, but just because we are human, to be human is enough because we're made in God's image and likeness, and our very existence makes God smile. Our very existence brings him glory. And so little John Paul, that and, you know, any secular person, any pro-choice advocate would look at him and say, you know, that child should have been aborted. Like 90, over 90% 90 of children with Down syndrome are aborted. Don't understand this fundamental, radical truth that Christ teaches us, which is that he, God himself, is taking on our identity and he's making us in his image and likeness and that is our value and that's the value that we proclaim that's the great truth that we proclaim that we're made in the image and likeness of God that we're made for love and to be loved and that that experience of love doesn't always look the way that we think it should it can sometimes look so mysterious and so vulnerable like little John Paul Kilner that's the positive in all this that's what we're fighting for that's why we're gathered here tonight you're not here just to you know, hear another talk about abortion, how horrible it is. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But we're here because of what we proclaim and what a beautiful truth that is, which is the, the radical truth about each one of us. Because we believe in the dignity of the human person. And that dignity is God taking on our humanity as Christ and offering us in his image and likeness to, for love. What a radical beauty. And that's why when we start to look at evil now, and I'm gonna talk about that, 
That's why this is such a crushing matter, because it goes directly against God's loving perfect will, which is life and that all men be saved, but instead it's attacking life when it's the most vulnerable and it's turning the family inside out, but turning the family, the mother against the child and the family against itself, a fi the family against the most vulnerable member of its own unit, the child.